All right, hello YouTube. Welcome back to my channel if you have ever watched any of my videos or welcome for the first time if you haven't. Today I am going to talk about the new documentary by Matt Walsh, What is a Woman? It's something I have really been wanting to see. Um, so I'm going to give you guys my review of that and some commentary on this topic in general. Uh, for those of you guys who, like me, have become a little bit red-pilled over the last couple of years, you probably know who Matt Walsh are and you probably already know about this documentary. For those of you who don't, uh, Matt Walsh is a political social pundit on YouTube. Uh, to be completely honest, I am not... A I'm not a big fan of his. Uh, I think for a, he is a little bit too right-leaning for my taste in a lot of topics. Uh, I don't watch him consistently. Um, every once in a while a video of his pops up on my YouTube feed and I'll watch it. But like I said, he's not. I'm not. A, I'm not the biggest fan of his. Um, yeah, but I have been anticipating this documentary uh, for those of you guys again who have fought, who follow my channel you know that especially the topic of transgenderism has been something that has really red pilled me over the last couple of years and everything that is in connection to it you know the whole gender non-binary stuff and you know all these other identifying as an animal and identifying as an elf and all the other kind of things that are happening. These, this is a topic that is of, hmm, sounds kind of weird to say, of interest to me, but maybe something that I, on a social level, have been really red-pilled by. So I was very interested in seeing this documentary. Yeah, so let's get into it. Uh... How do I feel about the documentary in general? So I would say I have mixed feelings on the documentary. Uh, how should I start? Um, first, I would say, like I said, I I don't know Matt Walsh. It's something I, in general, in my channel, don't like doing, or something I don't like doing in life in general is I don't like saying I like this person or I don't like this person or I think this is a good person or I think this is a bad person or this person is, you know, evil or good or whatever. I don't like that. Even for people who don't share my beliefs, I don't like saying things like that because I think it's not... It's not fair to judge someone's character and personality if you don't know them in real life. That's just how I feel about it. And so I generally don't really like it when other political pundits, when other people on YouTube say things like, oh, Trump is like this, or Trump is like that, or Biden is like this, and Biden is like that. And it's like, if you don't know this person in real life, you shouldn't comment on how this person is or how you think this person is. And um, having said that, I don't know that I really liked Matt Walsh's approach in this documentary. I think he went into all of the interviews incredibly smug. And um, I think you can tell by the way he interviewed people he already thinks he's the smartest person in the room and i think that already puts a lot of people on edge when they are talking with him uh, i also would say that i think there's certain aspects of the documentary that i personally didn't appreciate i'm gonna get to the things i did like in a second but first of all i think he could have included more people who are experts in this field and had more interviews like somebody who I would have really liked to have seen in this documentary is Parker Posey for those of you guys who don't know who that is um she I think she's British uh she's she's a woman who 
has really been lobbying against the whole transgender movement. Uh, and I think she's really smart and very well educated and versed on this topic. And I think she would have been a really great addition to this documentary. And I think that would have been more interesting to me and taken out the parts of the documentary where Matt Walsh is kind of being very catty and, you know, kind of putting his own opinion. He's kind of like, well, I have four children. And so and this is my opinion on it. And I'm kind of like, I don't really care about your opinion. I think when you make a documentary or when you're interviewing people in general, you should at least make an attempt of being unbiased and putting your own opinion to the side and letting people take the information from the experts and then formulate their own opinion on that. And so I think there was too many parts of the documentary where he's kind of like, well, I'm a father and this is how it works in my family and this is the way my children are. So this is how I feel. And I'm like, I don't care. I don't care about that. Like <laughs> that could have all gone away. Uh, I also have to say, I personally didn't enjoy... So, the, so most of the documentary, he's going to different parts of the U.S. and talking with people, um, experts and non-experts, and just kind of asking them questions. All of that I thought was okay. But then at, at one point in the documentary, he then goes to Kenya and talks to like the Maasai people and asks them how they feel about gender and if they think there is something if you can change your gender or all this kind of stuff. And of course, big surprise, the people in that part of the world, they haven't heard of this and they thought the whole idea was ridiculous. Uh, I didn't really enjoy that part either, mostly because I didn't think it was handled very well. I think that if he had done something like, Okay, I went to Japan, I went to Kenya, I went to Colombia, I went to Australia, I went to, you know, Iceland, blah, blah, blah. I went to like 20 countries in the world and in those places I talked to the local people and I asked them how they feel about gender and then kind of shown how different parts of the world talk and think about it. I think that would have given more legitimacy to what he did. But in the way he did it, it felt, A, to me, it kind of felt like maybe Matt Walsh has always wanted to go on a safari trip in Africa. And he was trying to figure out a way to make the company foot the bill. And he kind of was like, hey, how about I interview some people in Africa? I don't know why I'm doing bunny ears for that. See, I told you guys, I always do bunny ears in the wrong time. Put your hands down. <laughs> and... He's like, I'm going to go interview some people in Africa. Uh, if I do that, will you guys cover the expenses for the trip? And I'll just add it to my documentary. And that way I have an excuse to also go on a safari. Like, in part, it felt like that. Also, because he only did it in that one place, in that one location, it almost, I think, hurt the documentary and his argument because it felt very like he specifically found a place and a people who agreed with his personal opinion on gender. And he put them in the movie or in the documentary for that specific reason. And I, I, I'm like, I don't know. I feel like that didn't really help your argument. It actually hurt your argument more. Um, so those are kind of like the negatives that I had. Uh... Oh, and one more thing, I already talked to my friend Matt about this. I also think that he, this is where I said I don't know that I agree with Matt Walsh on everything is because he very much doesn't believe that there is a difference between sex and gender. And here I'm not red-pilled yet, or maybe I never will be. I do believe there is a difference between sex and gender. Sex, your hormones... Uh, your genitalia, etc. Um, gender is what do you like, what do you not like? You know, as a man, do you like pink? As a woman, do you like trucks? Is this part of what society... Don't do the money ears! Is this part... 
is this part of what society deems part of the correct gender expression for your sex? And um, so I do think these are two different things. Uh, I do think that Matt Walsh here is trying to simplify it too much and be like, these are the same things and you can absolutely not separate them. Gender and sex is the same thing and they go hand in hand. I don't believe that. I don't, I don't think going out into society that we see any proof of that as being a reality. So I would say those are the things in the documentary that I personally didn't agree with, or I would say I think weren't handled very well. Uh, in terms of the things that I do think were done very well, I do, or I do have to say that I applaud Matt Walsh in being able to sit down with people who obviously have very, very different opinions and ideas of himself and he managed to stay calm, cool, and collective when he was talking to them. I know that's something that I personally am not very good at. Uh, I do tend to be somebody who gets very frustrated very quickly. Uh, when I'm debating topics that I feel strongly about. Um, I really appreciated in the documentary that he exposed a lot of these, a lot of these leftist, <laughs> a lot of these leftist people um, for their true colors and a and the insanity, the absolute insanity that they're trying to push upon society in the Western world now. Um, I especially, if you guys have seen it, uh, I especially was very... There, there is a doctor that he interviews. She has like these... Um, she has like this blue hair. And she literally said... She's a pediatrician. I don't know what kind of parent would take their child to a pediatrician with blue hair and be like, this is the kind of pediatrician. I'm sorry, like, as a, here maybe again, I'm just a little too old fashioned and conservative. I'm sorry, when I go to the bank, when I go to the doctor, if I go to a lawyer, I'm sorry, I don't want somebody with purple hair and tattoos and piercings all over their face. Like, these are just kind of professions to me where I expect you to look professional. So to me, it would be very odd I don't know what kind of parent sees a doctor with blue greenish hair and is like, that is the kind of doctor I want for my child. I would be like, mm, lady, you're over 50 and you've got green hair. Just, you know, <laughs> especially as a doctor, I don't know. You know, I mean, like if you're an artist, or if she was some kind of pottery, if she did pottery or something, I'd be like, fine, okay, you know, but I don't know. Um, so anyway, this pediatrician, she actually said, because Matt Walsh asked her, like, well, at what age can children self-identify as the opposite gender? And she's like, oh, there's studies that show that infants, infants already have an understanding that they're in the wrong body or that they have the wrong, and I just was I can't believe in 2022 there's people out there who actually believe an infant, an infant can understand or actually thinks about, am I in the right body for my gender? That is sick. That is sick. And I hope to God that this documentary gets that doctor's license pulled. I mean, that is that is legitimately scary. That is legitimately scary. And how many doctors out there also believe, or maybe not even believe, but are pushing that for the sake of making money or whatever their motivation is to do this kind of thing. So that was one thing I thought was really scary to be exposed. Um, the other thing is, this is something I didn't know. I think I've heard it before, but it's not something I've really ever talked about or anything like that. Is that, that these 
um, hormone, or not, like puberty, puberty blockers that they're now giving a lot of young people. One of them, I'm going to say the name wrong, I am sorry. You know, I'm just not going to say the name. It starts with L, but it's like a medication. It starts with L. It's a, it's a puberty blocker that this same medication is also used to chemically castrate people. And Matt Walsh actually asked the doctor that. He's like, well, isn't this puberty blocker that you are giving these children also used as to chemically castrate people and then of course she got really uncomfortable right away and she's like maybe like we shouldn't and that i was like this is something that wasn't in the documentary but this is something where i was thinking about i'm kind of like you know the right has made this argument that i haven't really formulated my own opinion on fully yet um but that the woman who um created Planned Parenthood ha has been exposed as being a uh, a racist towards black people and believed in eugenics and that uh, abortion is more common along black women and I don't know how I feel about this yet I'm still trying to make up my mind but that the right is kind of claiming that this is a form of population control or maybe even um, a way to... Uh, what is that called when you try to get rid of a whole group of people? What is that called? Uh, in English, I can't think. I keep wanting to say eugenics. It's not eugenics. What is that called? You know, like genocide. Um, that this is a kind of a form of potential long-term genocide towards the black community. And so when Matt Walsh asked the doctor this, and she was, and she kind of felt uncomfortable, and I kind of was like, my mind right away was like, I'm wondering if this is not also a way of of the the left because the left is also the one who pushes abortion and saying how great it is if this is not another way of the left to actually eradicate undesirables which is gays and lesbians um by sterilizing us <laughs> when we are young these these people who have undesirable characteristics men who don't act like men girl or boys boys who don't act like boys girls who don't act like girls stupid bunny ears stop doing bunny ears um by chemically castrating us as young people already to kind of filter out undesirables into the long run. I don't know. And like, I'm not saying this is really what's happening or anything, but like when that occurred in, in the documentary, it was something where my mind just kind of went. And I think it's something that we definitely should maybe think about. Yeah. Um, so that was, I think that, that was something I really liked in the, um, in the documentary, I would say the other thing that, of course, is the, you know, it's the title of the documentary. It's the question he asks everyone. And I think that is very eye-opening and shocking. And this is something that I've actually experienced within my own life, in my own friendship circle. You know, Matt Walsh goes around and asks everybody, what is a woman? And everybody's answer is, a woman is anybody who identifies as a woman. <laughs> and that nobody is like capable of giving the definition of what a woman is without using the word woman. And anybody who knows anything about language knows that you can't define a word by using the word itself. You know, what is a tree? A tree is anything that looks like a tree. Oh, pfft. well, then you haven't defined what a tree is, right? And you can't define woman that way. So, and the amount of people he's talking to and all of them are doing this circular argument. He's like, what is a woman? A woman is anything that identifies as a woman. Okay, but what is a woman? 
anything that identifies as a woman. And literally, just like, it's just this circular argument that he's doing with people. And it's actually really, you know, it, it shows how disingenuous the left has become. Because they, in their head, you know that they know what a woman is. And they know that you know what a woman is. And that's why they feel they can define woman as anybody who identifies as a woman. Because they are correctly assuming that you know in your head what a woman is. So that they can say that and you go like, oh, okay, I understand your definition. Because I know what a woman is in my head. So it's, it's this really false game that they are playing. Um, and it, it, it really is. It's, it's a really, really disturbing and disgusting place that we've gotten in our society today. Um, and I've said this in my video where I was like talking about being a turf. I would say I find it especially scary because I think women are actually going along with this more so even than men and and I think it shows kind of how men and women are actually legitimately socialized and brought up differently where women in general are made to are socialized to believe that they have to be agreeable and empathetic and understanding, even up to the point where it is hurting themselves. And I, I definitely think this is something where I think so many women, and you see like you went to the Women's March and all these women so desperately want to appear understanding and kind and empathetic even at the detriment of themselves. And I think that it's just so, I think it is so sad to see the discomfort in a lot of these women where you could tell within themselves, they know this is wrong and this is going to end up hurting me, but... I don't want to be seen as an unkind person. And I don't know, I talked with my friend Natalia about this today. I was like, I personally am so sick. I am so sick and tired of living in this world where we are allowing everybody to freely live out their insanity and their lies and their make-believe for the sake of appearing kind and empathetic. I'm so sick and tired of this. And this is happening across the board, not just with the trans community, but with almost everything. The, like the whole body positivity thing. I'm 600 pounds and I'm healthy. No, you're not. No, you're not. And it's not attractive. And it's not healthy. We need to stop saying this. I was born a man and now I'm a woman. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're a man who's dressing up like a woman. That is reality. You know, it's, it's just, it's, it, we've just, we've completely warped this idea of what true kindness is. True kindness is not allowing people to live out all of their psychosis and neuroses. That is not kindness. That is, that is, that is really, actually, if anything at all, it's the opposite of empathy. It shows how much we don't care and how lazy we are as a society. Because if you legitimately care about people, you might actually have to sit down and talk with them and figure out what the, what the underlying problem is and work through that problem with them. And that might take months and years to go through to get them back to being in a healthy mindset and we can't be bothered with that so it's easier to meet somebody and they're like i'm a trans tree gender neutral lesbian from mars that weighs 700 pounds in a wheelchair but i'm healthy yes you are so anyway can you get my order thank you okay bye ginger you know that you're not actually caring about people if you are 
It, it's just not. It, that is not true caring. And I am tired and I will not be made to feel like I am the bad guy or people who think like me are the bad people. Because I know at the end of the day that life is hard. And if you want to make it in life, well, you know what? You just have to get thicker skin and you have to do the hard work and you have to deal with the sad moments and you have to deal with the days where people might not be nice to you and all this kind of stuff. And we should encourage people to say, you know what? You've got this. Life is not easy, but you can do it. You can do it. And, and you don't have to escape into this idea of, well, I'm a victim. I'm perpetually put down and I can't succeed. And just giving people excuse after excuse after excuse to fail, that's not kindness and that's not empathy. And I, I, I'm just so grossed out by, by the left when it comes to this. And I'm so, I'm so over the left's belief of having the moral high ground because they're taking the lazy way by just not actually caring, just, just affirming everybody in their, in their delusions so they don't have to actually take the time to really listen and help people get back to a place where they could actually live healthy and productive lives. Um, yeah, so do I think it's worth a watch? I do. Um, I would probably give it an eight out of 10 stars. Like I said, I think Matt Walsh, he put himself a little bit too much into the documentary and you can tell that he's, he, okay. Again, I don't know him. I don't want to say this is how he is, but based off of the videos I've seen on him, in YouTube and in this documentary, it does seem that he's a little bit smug and arrogant and thinks very highly of himself. And I think he could have taken all of the, this is me and this is how I think and that's the way the real world is. I think he could have taken that out and it would have made it a stronger documentary. And I think he could have either taken out the part about Africa or added more aspects of that. And I also think that would have made the documentary a little bit stronger. Um, but overall, I do think he really exposed a lot of the craziness from the left. Um, and especially the ridiculous, like, circular arguments of what is a woman. So, yeah, that's my feedback and review on this. Um, would love to hear if you guys have watched it. If you haven't, something I personally also didn't really like is that to watch the video you have to subscribe to the Daily Wire. That I also felt was a little bit tacky, you know, considering Matt Walsh really saying this is the one of the most important documentaries you're ever going to watch in the 21st century. It has a really important message. I'm like, if you really believe that, I think you should have made it available to everybody for free. Um, or at the least, like, do like a... $2.99 rented to watch it. The fact that you have to sign up for a monthly subscription, that also kind of rubbed me the wrong way. That seems disingenuous to me. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, I do think it's worth a watch. I do think it has some very important things that I think need to be discussed in this time with the world spinning more and more out of control, especially the Western countries spinning more and more out of control. Um, so yeah, if you've watched it, let me know. What did you think? How did you feel? And for anybody who is watching this video, leave it in the comments. What is a woman? Do you know? All right, so take care everyone, be safe. Sorry for the bunny ears. And yeah, anything else? No. Okay, bye.